In this presentation, I shall discuss one of the contentious issues of conducting educational research in conflict-affected areas. In particular, I will talk about dual positionality and how I dealt with the challenges of being simultaneously an insider and outsider researcher of higher education in the Gaza Strip. Although this presentation comes under the methodological series entitled Researching Conflict-Affected Areas, the case of the Gaza Strip, the issues of positionality which I will discuss here may be of interest to a wider audience of researchers. Let me first introduce you to my research work. My PhD thesis is on academic life under occupation in the Gaza Strip. It is a sociological study which explores the past and present higher education experience for educationalists at Gaza's universities, and how this experience may be evolving in the shifting socio-political context in the Arab world. If you are interested to learn more about my study, the thesis is available online for your reference. You can also watch my short films on academic life in the Gaza Strip, on YouTube and on my personal website. Here it is for your reference. The web address of my website is also indicated again at the last slide of this PowerPoint. Now let's talk about positionality. To start, in the literature there is a disagreement on whether it is better to be an insider or outsider researcher to the community. But in fact, each of these positions has its advantages and disadvantages. Let's start by the insider researcher. On the positive side, an insider researcher to the community is expected to be attached and committed, and therefore being perceived as a legitimate researcher of his or her own area, who can be trusted by the participants more than an outsider. On the negative side, an insider researcher may have his or her own prejudices with regard to the research community and thus act more as a fault finder rather than a researcher who is looking for truth in a balanced and open manner. An insider is sometimes also taken as biased worker who is too embedded in the culture of the community and its circumstances and therefore is insufficiently critical to research it. This may also be referred to as ethnocentricity or cultural blindness, as the researcher's familiarity with his or her own context could make them take its social rules and interactions for granted and as natural. The outsider researcher is appreciated as being more critical and comparative than the insider person. However, an outsider also carries the disadvantages of what's so-called inexperienced criticality, as he or she is not actually part of the research community and therefore remains stranger to its cultural context. Also sometimes in the South, the outsider researcher Eva Sterner would be viewed as different and with suspicion as associated with the image of the colonizer. In this context, being unfamiliar with the area puts further pressure on the outsider researcher for impression management to gain trust. The outsider researcher should also take seriously security issues, especially in conflict-affected areas as his or her own unfamiliarity with the place could also mean, as different from the local, that the researcher is not always able to see or predict situations of danger. But in my case, I felt confused with regard to my positionality. I have been a resident of the Gaza Strip for more than 22 years. I lived, studied there, and worked at its governmental schools and two of its universities. I also witnessed the 2008 war and lived conditions of siege and daily power cuts in Gaza. However, as a Palestinian refugee, I was born, uh, lived and studied for basic and preparatory school in Kuwait. I also studied for my MSc and PhD at universities of Oxford and Cambridge, 
so spent several years of postgraduate studies in the UK and away from Gaza. So am I an insider or an outsider to the Gaza Strip? In fact, my in and out experiences interact with each other in many ways. For example, although I was in Gaza, I was academically focused and not that much involved into its social and political life. And so my physical presence does not necessarily mean that I am fully an insider. On the other hand, although I am a refugee who lived and studied for several years abroad, I have a strong bond to the Gaza community and I'm influenced by my life there, so I am not fully an outsider either. My dual positionality is rewarding in itself because it helps me to draw on the advantages of both positions. It helps me to integrate and separate from the research community in the Gaza Strip. For example, I can be perceived as attached and committed, and thus be trusted as a legitimate researcher. But simultaneously, as an outsider, I possess critical awareness and comparative perspectives to the Gaza culture and political context. But this dual positionality also means that there are challenges that I needed to take into consideration and find a way of dealing with them. Here I show a few steps which I took in my PhD research which helped me greatly to deal with the challenges part of my dual positionality. First, a research diary. I use the research diary, although a digital one, to document my pre- and post-reflections on the research questions, as well as some of my interactions with the participants during the interviews in which my positionality had a positive or negative influence, and how I managed to overcome each. Second, critical literature review. Conducting a critical literature review was also helpful as it introduced me to different perspectives regarding themes which I discuss in my thesis, including siege, war, gender, and factionalism. This was important to gain a distance from my own first-hand experience regarding the issues under consideration. Third, personal reflexivity account. I included rather than excluded my narratives through mentioning transparently my motivation and biases from the outset of the study. I also included a post-reflexivity account and a photo essay and an art book for this purpose. You can learn more details on these and on other measures which I have taken to address the insider-outsider paradigm in researching higher education in the Gaza Strip through reading my thesis. There, I also discuss through a researcher's vignette in the appendices how my dual positionality played in real-life interviews and how I dealt with these situations capitalizing on the advantages of both my insiderness and outsiderness for a better researcher-research interaction. And here are the resources which informed this presentation. Thank you for your interest in this video on positionality in researching conflict-affected areas.